28, 40, 41. What are you doing? Working on building a strong foundation. Have you not been listening this week? Okay, take a break. How you feel? Building a strong foundation. That's what I'm doing. No, that's not exactly the strong foundation we've been talking about this week. Remember, we're talking about building a strong foundation on Jesus, not muscles. But that was really impressive. Awesome. So, a strong foundation on Jesus. That's right. And so far this week, we've talked about the foundation of love. Love. Forgiveness. And yesterday was worth. Today, we have another foundation to add to that list. And today's foundation is the foundation of promise. That's right. But before we get started learning our foundation for the day, guess what we have to do? We have to go over our motto. That's Who remembers right. our motto? We've been going over it every single day. We have. You know what? I don't think we're going to put it on the screen this time because I think they can do it. All right. So I have faith. So are you ready? So close your eyes. All right. And say the motto with us. All right. Are you ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. Jesus, Jesus our, our strong, strong foundation. foundation. Awesome. Can I open my eyes? I didn't hear him because I had my eyes closed. Can we do that one more time? Oh, there you are. Here we go. All right. Ready? Three, two, one. Jesus, Jesus our, our strong, strong foundation. foundation. Awesome job. Good you guys job. are doing so great. Now, let's go over our Bible verse that we've been going over every single day. It's the Bible verse for this week, and it comes from Philippians 1, 6. Say it with me. All right, here we go. I am, I am sure, sure of this, that he who started a good work in me will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ, of Christ Jesus. Jesus. Awesome job, everybody. Good You're doing so job. great good job. learning this Bible verse today at VBS. All right, today we're going to Go ahead and go on over to Bible study. But Miss Michelle, what are we going to be learning today? Today, our point says Jesus will always love me. And today in our blueprint room, Miss Heather and Miss Celeste are going to help us know what that's about. You know, yesterday we talked about how Jesus died for you and for me, for the whole world, for our sins. But guess what? What? He didn't stay in the tomb. He rose three days later. And not only that, he made a promise to his disciples. I can't wait to see what that promise is. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. So here we go. Let's get started on day four. construction crew. We are so excited to have you back on the job today. Good morning. Day four. We have an exciting, busy day ahead. That is right. Today, we're going to talk a little, well, not all day, but right now we're going to talk about how would you move a large, heavy rock? Wow, that's a big job. That's a hard job. It is a hard job. You know who we need to ask? Who do we need to ask? The construction crew. Okay, here we Let's go. 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 Okay, girls. Mm. If you had to move a large, heavy rock, how would you do it? Leslie? I would use a crane. Okay. Boys and girls, how many of you would join Leslie and use a crane to move that large, heavy rock? Okay, <laughs> Miley. One. What's Miley's idea? I would blow it up. Ooh, I oh, like that, one. that would get rid of a huge heavy rock. When in doubt, C5. Four. C5. C4. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, boys and girls, let's see what Kylie has to say. Muscles. Uh, Muscles. Ooh. Boys and girls, 
Do you think Kylie could handle that by herself or would she need your help? I think she would need your help. Oh, sorry, Kylie. Yeah. I would need your help. What about Aubrey? I would just hire someone. Hire someone to do the job. <laughs> well, the best. that would work too. Yes. Boys and girls, we have lots of ways that we can move that heavy rock. But let's talk about our story for the day about how a huge heavy rock was moved in the Bible. So this morning, our story is talking about Jesus' resurrection and promise. Yesterday, we talked about Jesus dying on the cross for us. So let's see what our Bible story has to tell us today. If you have your Bible with you, open to Matthew 28 verses 1 through 10 and 16 through 20. Jesus' resurrection and promise. Jesus was arrested for crimes that he did not commit. Beaten and nailed to a cross where he died for the sins of all people. That includes me and you, boys and girls. His body was placed in a tomb and a large stone was placed over the opening of the tomb. Guards stood by the tomb so that no one could get in. The followers of Jesus believed their hope was gone. Early on Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, walked to the tomb. There had been a violent earthquake, and an angel of the Lord had come down from heaven. The angel rolled back the stone that had been placed in front of the tomb and sat on it. The angel had the appearance of lightning and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards who had been placed in front of the tomb to guard Jesus' body were so frightened that they fainted and fell to the ground. I would have been very frightened too. I think I would have, I would have fainted and fallen to the ground too. When the women saw the angel, they were frightened. But the angel reminded them that Jesus had risen just as he told them he would. The angel invited the women to come and see where Jesus had been and then told them to go and tell Jesus' disciples what they had seen. Jesus met the women on the way and said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my disciples to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. The women ran to tell the disciples the great news. Jesus is alive. They told the disciples to go to Galilee where Jesus would meet them. The 11 disciples traveled to the mountain in Galilee where Jesus had directed them to go. When the disciples saw Jesus, they worshiped him. Jesus said to the men, go and make disciples everywhere. Baptize people and teach them to do everything I have told you. Then Jesus made an amazing promise. He promised to be with them always. So, wow. In our story. I love that story. I love that story too. Such an amazing story. In our story, was the stone moved by any of the ways our crew members mentioned? I'm pretty sure they didn't pay anybody to do it. No. Pretty sure they didn't use their muscles. No. <clears throat> Pretty sure they didn't use a crane. I'm certain they didn't use a crane. And I'm pretty sure they didn't blow it up. Boys and girls, no. how was the stone moved in our story? It was an angel. The angel moved the stone in the story. I have some things I need an angel to move. We'll talk about that later. Next, we are going to add our word for today to our construction poster. Miley has a piece of paper that has the word promise on it. The reason why we're looking at the word promise is because Jesus made a promise and he kept that promise when he died on the cross and then rose again. Let's do this, Miley. Miley, you're welcome. 
Now we have a pop quiz. You ready? Do you think they're ready? I think they're ready. Are you ready, crew leaders? Mm -hmm. No? Aubrey's not ready. This is I easy, Aubrey. We can do this. What promise did Jesus keep? Miss Heather, what promise did Jesus keep? That he rose again. That's right. What promise did he make, Miss Heather? That he would be with them always and never leave them. What makes you confident Jesus will keep that promise? Well, every promise that Jesus made in the Bible that we've studied about, Jesus kept. He's never broken a single promise that he made. And that gives me the confidence to know that he's not going to break this promise either. That's right. And this was a good reminder. Yes. I like the word promise. Next up, we are going to take a look at our gospel poster. And first, we're going to review some of the things we talked about yesterday. And Miss Heather has two more of the symbols to talk about today. So see if you can remember what the first item is. Looks like a crown. God rules. God rules, that's right. Very good, Aubrey. Who remembers the second symbol? We sin. Very good, Kylie, we did sin. And then the third symbol, God provided, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so God rules, what does that mean? We broke his rules and he loves us anyway. We sinned. We, when we broke those rules, we sinned and God provided forgiveness for us. Then number three, the middle one is God provided. What did God provide us? Jesus. He did provide us Jesus. He also remembered that we have worth. He gave us worth, and Jesus died on the cross for us. There are two more symbols. The fourth symbol has a present on it. Anybody want to guess what that is? He gave. <gasps> yes. He gave. Jesus gives. Yes. So what Jesus gave was his life. He died on a cross, but he didn't stay there. He rose again, and he lives and he died and rose again for us to save us. That is right. Number five, we have a symbol with two hands on it. What does that mean? Anybody want to guess? Miss Heather? What does somebody do when they give you a gift? What do we do? If I give you the gift, you're going to receive that and you're going to respond with Thank you. Right? That's right. Yes, you receive the gift and you respond. So what is our response? So Jesus gave us the ultimate gift, the very best gift we could ever receive. And what we can do now is respond. And I know a lot of you that have been to VBS before remember the ABCs. So crew members help us remember A is for... Admit. admit. We must admit that we are sinners. B, believe. we must believe that Jesus is God's Son. And C, confess. 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 We job. must confess that Jesus is Lord and that we need Him. And we need to accept and respond to Him. Very good. Very good, boys and girls. Great job, crew members. What's next, Miss Heather? Okay, so... It looks like somebody made a mess. We got another mess. And you know what? I think on a construction site, one of the fun things that has to happen sometimes is demolition day. Does, do you enjoy demolishing things? <laughs> I know our crew members enjoy that. So <laughs> guess what? We get to demolish Woo! our balloons here today. So, boys and girls, our leaders, let's start. Go for it.
Charles, in each balloon was a scripture verse that we want to share with you today. And these, these verses are verses in the Bible, and that is God's Word. And so we have explained to you the ABCs of salvation, but we want to read with you God's Word and exactly what He says to us in that blueprint that He leaves for us, His Word, the Bible, to help guide us so that you can know exactly what He says about salvation. So... Crew team leaders, we're going to start with verse, first of all, it's in the book of Revelation, Revelation 4, 11. Our Lord and God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things and because of your will, they exist and were created. And Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fall, fallen short of the glory of God. Our next verse is Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And John 3.16 for God so loved the world in this way, he gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Very good. Okay, the next verse is Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. And Romans 5, 8. But God proves his own love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Our next verse comes from 1 Peter 3, 18. For Christ also suffered for his sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring you to God after being put to death in the fleshly realm, but made alive in spiritual realm. Okay, and Acts 16.31. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Okay, now we're going to read John 14.6. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, and the last verse that we have for today is Romans 10 9 because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved boys and girls those are the verses that teach us how to a admit we are a sinner b believe in Jesus Christ as Savior and c confess with our mouth and with our heart that he is Lord so that we can accept him and become a Christian. Just like we said yesterday, if you have any questions about that, that is the most important decision you will ever make in your whole entire life. And we are here. We would love to talk with you on the phone, talk with your parents. Um, please let an adult know if you have any more questions or if you feel like you're ready to make that decision. Um, let's close in a word of prayer. And we've had a great day with you guys today. We have. It's been an excellent day. Okay, when we pray, what do we do? We close our eyes and bow our heads. Crew, are you ready? Good job. Let's do this. Father, thank you so much for loving us even when we don't deserve it. Thank you for loving us even though we break your rules. Lord, we are thankful for the forgiveness that you've provided for us. We thank you for the worth you've put on us that you would send Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Lord, we're also very thankful for the promise that you made and you kept that Jesus would rise again and leave the tomb and allow us to respond to him and have eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
Okay, boys and girls, have a great time in crafts, and we'll see you tomorrow morning for our last day together as a construction crew. What an amazing promise. Jesus promised the disciples that he would always be with them. And guess what? He'll always be with you and me too. Well, now it's time to head on over to Bulldozer Crafts. So go look in your box and get your craft for today. If you are in kindergarten through second grade, you are going to get to do your safety punch out trunk today. So go grab that and I want you to color it, punch it out, put it together, and don't forget to send me pictures. If you're in third through sixth grade today you are going to be making a fidget spinner you know whenever we get worried or scared or sad we can trust the promise of Jesus that he will always be there with us so let's head on over and see Miss Megan and Miss Caitlin y'all welcome to day four of VBS crafts we're excited to see y'all again um, remember to be practicing your motto of Jesus our strong foundation and today we are talking about the foundation of promise Jesus promised to always be with us on the Sunday after Jesus's death Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James went to the tomb and found out that Jesus had risen Later that day, the disciples traveled to Galilee to see Jesus. The disciples received instructions from Jesus and the promise that he would be with them always. Jesus' promises are always true, and he keeps every promise that he makes. Sometimes we get nervous and anxious and forget that Jesus has promised to always be with us. Today, third through sixth graders are going to be making a fidget spinner with Miss Megan to remind us that when we do get anxious about the day or the future, that we have hope in the promises of Jesus. Pre-K through second graders, today is your day to color and assemble your safety truck. All right, today for our third through sixth grade, we're gonna be making a fidget spinner. And you have all the supplies that you will need in your little bag from Miss Michelle. And the first step that we're gonna have, that we're gonna do is color these wing nuts. Miss Caitlin's doing that for us, so we can go ahead and get started. So you'll have two wing nuts that she's coloring right now with a permanent marker. And then you're also going to have your screw and then two hex nuts and then the cap for the top. And then Miss Caitlin, do you want to draw a little face on our man? Ooh, yes. All right. Happy face. All right. So since Miss Caitlin finished with the first one, we are going to take our screw and put it bottom down and then take the wing nut with the wings facing down and screw those all the way on. This is going to be our fidget spinner legs. Might take a minute. Screw it all the way down to the bottom. Looks like he's dancing. All right, and then the next one we're going to get is one of the hex nuts. That'll be next. Once you get this one all the way down, start with the hex nut. And you're going to leave some space in between them. Start screwing it on there. Too. Okay, make a little space. Put the next hex nut on. It's pretty simple. That one. All right, and then the next one we're going to do is the wing nut and do it now with the wings facing up because this will be his arms. All right.
much fun. You're doing such a great job in crafts this week. Well, guys, now we're going to take about a two-minute break. I want you to run, get a snack, get something to drink, run to the restroom, do whatever you need to do for the next two minutes. And when we come back, we're going to learn our song for today.
Jorge Santiago lives in Comerio, Puerto Rico. And when Hurricane Maria damaged people's homes and lives, Jorge began to see how he can help people. The, the town of Comerio is still recovering, and the, um, we're facing challenges like um, sometimes no power and, and sometimes no water. And um, we're still working on getting fixed houses. So Jorge began working with Send Relief, a group made up of volunteer mission teams who meet needs and share Jesus. We quickly uh, start working with Send Relief, water filter, water and food and stuff, and we um, quickly move to start bringing those resources to our people in Comarillo. Then, Jorge and Send Relief started helping people fix their homes that were damaged in the hurricane. That's how they met Alfredo and his family. When Hurricane Maria came, it was a very loud noise. Then roof was destroyed and the water rushed in, and we had to flee until the hurricane passed. Alfredo and his family had been living without a roof for many months when Jorge and his Send Relief team showed up to help them. A few months later, Alfredo came to one church comerio, a new church that Jorge is starting. One church comerio has done so much for the town of Comerio. Not only has the church given us food, water, and a new roof, but more important, it prays for us. Now, Alfredo and his family are the first ones at church every morning to pass out water and to hug as people come. So people start believing. People start believing in what we were doing and people start believing in, in the great and awesome God that we all serve. Jorge always knew that God wanted him to start a new church in Comerio, but he had no idea how quick God would move. So the people in Comerio are still facing lots of problems. You know, it's not just enough to learn about missions and pray about missions and give to missions. We should always be ready to go and do whatever God wants for us to do. Just like the Alfredo family, they gave out water and hugs. Are you ready and willing to do whatever God asks you to do for missions? Let's go now and check out the Worthy family in Arezzo and see what they have for us today. Hi guys, every morning at 7 a.m. our family does a family devotion before we head off to school. Our school is real close and we can walk there in like five minutes. School here is a lot like school in the U.S. Except here, we learn more languages because Italy is home to so many people from different countries. I'm learning three languages, French, Latin, and Italian. In Italian, Jesus loves you is Gesù ti ama. Can you say that? Gesù ti ama. Cosa facciamo domattina? Si fa il lavoro di cavallo di Oh, bravo! School is another great place to tell people that Jesus loves them. Throughout the year, we host outreach parties at our house, where we invite a whole bunch of our friends from school to celebrate things like holidays and special events. And there we can tell them about Jesus. In this area of Italy is where the story of Pinocchio was written. You know the story of the little wooden boy whose nose would grow every time he told a lie? You couldn't always trust what Pinocchio said. But we can always trust what God says. In Matthew, Jesus says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And remember, I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Not only is that an awesome promise, but it's also a command for us. Go tell others about Jesus. And that's what we do. And one way we do that is by hosting a really big VBS camp during the summer. It's a lot like VBS in the States, with games, activities, and a lot of stories about Jesus and how He loves us. VBS is so much fun, so remember God's promise, He will always be with you, and go tell others. 
School looks a lot in Italy like it does here in the United States. But gosh, can you imagine learning three languages? But you know, I guess it does come in kind of handy when you're missionaries and you're talking to lots of different people. That's pretty cool. Well, guys, guess what? It's time for worship rally. So why don't you count down with me? Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, everybody, welcome back for Worship Rally, day number four. I hope you had a great day today. Let me have everybody stand up, and we're going to get ready to do our theme song, Concrete and Cranes. Here we go. Let's go. Get your jackhammers ready. Here we go. together. Now, oh, are we ready? The last couple of days we've been shouting as loud as we can. So this time I want you to shout as softly as you can. Oh, that's going to be so hard. Shout very softly. All right. So on the count of right, three, so are you ready? One, two, three. Jesus, our strong foundation. Good job. All right. That was good. I, I don't even know if they, I couldn't hear them. You couldn't hear, well, that means we need they were shouting so softly. Okay, so do we need to do it louder? Maybe we should do it one more time. Okay, and really, really loud this time. All right, so don't tell your parents, though, like, but I want you to say it really loudly. Really loudly. Scare them. All right, are really you ready? Loudly. All right, here we go. On the three. count of three. Ready? One, two, 
three. Jesus, our strong foundation. All Good right. job. Everybody. I heard on that time. Yeah. All right. And all week long, we've been working on that verse. I bet that you have it completely memorized by now. So let's say it together. Here we, Here go. we go. Three, two, one. I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Good job, guys. All right, so let's go over what we've talked about all week long building that foundation in Jesus. On day one, we talked about the foundation of love. And on day two, we talked about the foundation of forgiveness. And then yesterday, we talked about the foundation of worth. And today, day number four, the foundation of Promise. Promise. That's right. And today we learn that Jesus will always love me. And our verse that goes along with our point for the day says this. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Matthew 28, 20. Guys, today in Bible study with Miss Celeste and Miss Heather, you talked about how Jesus, after three days, he rose from the dead. And when he rose, he saw Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James. No, it must have been incredible. I know, how exciting. And he told them to go tell the disciples to meet him at Galilee. And when he met them in Galilee, they were so excited to see them. And he made a promise to them that he would always be with them, just like he will always be with you and with me. That's awesome. That's awesome. So the foundation of promise here today. And also today, we got a special song just for today. Let me have you stand up and let's learn it together. It's called Build My Life on you. All right, so right here at the beginning, while the music's just kind of playing, we're going to take our left hand and we're going to push down and then up and then turn our hand over and bring it down. Then we're going to take our right hand and we're going to push down, push up, turn that hand over and let it come all the way down. Very, very good. All right, now. When I feel afraid, like all the walls are caving in around you, we're going to take our hand. When I feel afraid, and then we're going to take our right hand in a fist, bring it in just like the other side, and then bring your hands in front of your face like the walls are caving in around you. All right, let's do that again. When I feel afraid, like walls are going to cave in around me. Very, very good. Now, let's look at this part. I think about the way. So, we think we're going to take our uh, left hand and we're going to go to the right. I think about the way your love and grace and peace have found me. So, that's right. We're going to do this, aren't we? Mm -hmm. So, we're going to... Think about the way your love and grace and peace have found me. And then the next part, I remember, so touch your hands to your head, what you said. So, head up, said, I remember what you said, you, on the word you, hands at the top will never, never leave me. That's going to go kind of fast, so let's practice it, okay? I remember what you said. You will never, never leave me. Very, very good. The next part goes like this. So I'm holding on to you. You're going to go to the left. You're going to grab something like a rope and pull it towards you. And then you're going to hold on on the other side and pull that rope towards you. Like you're pulling on a rope. I'm holding on to the promises, the foundation of promise. All right, so that's a lot. So let's start from the very beginning. Let's start with our intro. So take your left hand, press down and up 
and all the way back down, press down, press up, bring it down and around. Very good. When I feel afraid with a fist, and then a fist on the other side, all the walls are caving in around me. When I think about the way your love and grace and peace have found me, I remember what you said. You will never, never leave me. So I'm holding on to your promises. Very, very good, guys. Great job so far. All right, the next part. I build my life. So we're going to take our hands and we're going to swoop up. Do that again. Swoop up. So I build my life. Life. So the, the build is kind of fast. I build my life on you. All right, so take your hands and scoop up to the left. Scoop up to the right and swing them back over to the left. On the strength of your love. So take your hands, cross them over, and it's going to be kind of this side. The love and your mercy and truth. For truth, we're going to put our hands kind of in a praying hands. Here we go. On this, this rock I stand, not on shifting sand. All right, so that was, that was kind of fast too. So let's go. On this rock I stand, not on shifting sand. So we're going to go slow, quick, quick, quick. Kind of like a wave. Shifting sand. So, on this rock I stand, not on shifting sand. I build my life on you. And now bring your right hand, Jesus. And from there, during the music, our hands are going to go to the right to the left and back up just like that. Jesus, right, left, and up. Very good. All right, so the second verse is a lot like the first verse. So we're going to take, it says, when the wind and rain try to wash away my shelter. So we're going to take the wind and we're going to have our hand Spin in a circle. When the wind and rain try to wash away my shelter. And bring your hand in front of your face again. When the wind and rain try to wash away my shelter. And then we're going to take our right hand. We're going to press over this way. Back in. Press over this way. Back in. And then take both hands. Press out and around. All right, now with the words, it's going to be like this. You will not be moved. The walls you build will stand forever. So press and in, press and in, press out and around. Very good. Next part. You know, already know this part. I remember what you said. You will never, never leave me. So I'm holding on, pull that rope, to your promises. I build my life on, swing around, you on the strength of your love and mercy and truth. On this rock I stand, not on shifting sand. I build my life on you. And then we repeat. 
We don't do Jesus that time. I almost did it, but we repeat. And we go, I build my life on you, on the strength of your love and mercy and truth with your prayer hands. On this rock I stand, not on shifting sand. I build my life on you, Jesus, around and around and back up, Jesus, around and around and back up. Take this. This is the last thing. We're going to press down and then just with our left hand, Go up and look at heaven. Very good. I know that's a lot of motions, but I know that you can do it. So if you are ready, are you ready? I am ready. I think that we are ready to try it with the music. Here we go. to see what is happening with Renzo. I know yesterday, you know, he found out that Foreman Niermeyer had not built a very strong foundation. And that could so be a problem. It could be a big problem. You know, he snuck oh, onto no. the work site. And Sounds like he's kind of cutting corners. He is, he is. So we are about to find out what happens next. All right, take a seat and let's watch that video.
Weeks pass quickly, and Renzo Wright has learned many things he thought he already knew. But Foreman Nehemiah and the Cobra Comb Construction Company continue to pull ahead. <laughs> things look hopeless for young Renzo. If he doesn't win, he will lose his reward. The use of the 34th floor. Lloyd, I know sometimes I get mad, but you've always been like a brother to me. Really? That's why beating Cobra Comb has been so important to me. If we win, Mrs. Kulhaas said we could designate the 34th floor for a new kid's colossal Bible club, where kids all over the city could learn about God's love like we did. That's what my secret floor was for. But now I don't think it will happen. Renzo, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever failed to do for me. It's not over yet, Lloyd. It's over, Renzo. Pack it up and go home! <laughs> I'm afraid he's right, Renzo. It's time to pack it in. We can't give up yet, Mr. Santiago! Yeah, think of the children! It's not up to me. We've run out of girders. Hey, genius! Check your math next time! <laughs> Mr. Santiago, that's impossible! I ordered extra! More than we needed! Sorry, kid. It's true. Oh, man! Things can't get any worse. We're out of concrete, too. Well, that's worse. Looks like we put too much concrete and steel into the foundation. <laughs> what a waste! <laughs> it's okay to mess up, Renzo. I do it every day. No, Lloyd. I did the right thing. There's no way I didn't order the right amount. I know it cost us a lot of time and materials, but to grow big, you have to build on a strong foundation. You've come up short this time, Renzo. Literally. Is this cool, Huss? What's this I hear about running out of concrete and girders? Oh, well, uh, Renzo, you said you would build the tallest building in the world, but you didn't even get the supply order right. That, that, that's, that's not actually... Extra, extra, read all about it. Boy genius botches job. Reevaluates his genius. Gets your that paper boy is very dedicated to his job. Uh, Mrs. Kulhas, there's been a mistake. Yes, there was hiring you. I'm pulling your contract. You're no longer the chief architect. You're now assistant to the weekend intern. And don't expect to get your Bible club either. Oh. <laughs> Renzo, you lose! <laughs> Oh, God, I don't understand. I've never failed like this before. I did all the math. I was sure we had enough girders and concrete. I guess I really need your help. Truth is, I always have. It doesn't have to be the biggest building, Lord. Please, help us build the best building we can. Even with all his smarts, the boy architect could not get everything right. But what's most important is that Renzo knew where to turn. Renzo remembered that Jesus had promised he will always love us, no matter what kind of trouble we get into. Jesus is our strongest foundation. Wow, so Renzo Whoa. wants that floor Gosh. to open back up the Kids Colossal Bible That's Club. awesome. But he's run into another problem. It seems like he doesn't have enough supplies and he's not chief architect anymore. So it doesn't look like he's going to get that floor after all. Oh, I guess that we are going to have to wait until tomorrow. But you know, he did do the right thing and he prayed to God for help. So I am so excited to see what tomorrow brings and if he can somehow finish that building. I know, it'll be so incredible to watch what happens next. But it's, if I'm right, that means that we are now at the end of day, day four. four. That's right, that means that we only have just one, one more, more day. day. It's been such a fun week. I hope that you have had as much fun there at your home as we have here on our construction site. That's right. So remember that as you keep doing your crafts and as you work on music and maybe you're doing some snacks at your house, make sure that you send some pictures 
to our Facebook page or maybe the Kids Haven Facebook page. Maybe you just want to email it to Miss Michelle. And we would love to see all that you're doing at your houses. That's right. So until tomorrow, guys. Until tomorrow. We have to say goodbye again. So we will see you guys tomorrow. But before we finish up today, Mr. Robert, would you like to pray for us? I would love to pray for all us. Right. All right. Here we go. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thanks so much for giving us another wonderful day here at Vacation Bible School as we learn more and more about you. God, I pray that you would just bless all of our kids watching today, all of our families, all of our parents. God, that you would just bless each one and that, God, you would bless us with another great day tomorrow. So, God, we just pray this in your name. Amen. All right, guys, that's it. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Thanks Bye. so much. Bye-bye.